We're here on the eve of the NBA draft, and we've got some questions. Today's episode is a Duke men's basketball NBA draft fill in the blank. Let's get right to it. Hi, everybody. Dick Vitale. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Locked On Blue Devils with J.J. Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils, your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Lockdown Blue Devils podcast. My name is JJ Jackson. It's so great to have you here with us on the program today. We've got a lot of awesome things to be discussing here on the eve of the NBA draft, fill in the blank time, Duke basketball NBA draft edition. And who better to do this with me than my pal Josh Smith from the Devil's Den podcast? If you haven't done so already, please be sure to follow and subscribe to Lockdown Blue Devils for free wherever it is that you get your podcast, Make sure you also go check out the show on YouTube. Hit that subscribe button to watch us daily. A reminder, in June and July throughout the summer, we're only out three times a week. But when August comes around, when the football team gets set for fall camp, Locked On Blue Devils comes back your way five days a week. So continue to support us. Your support means the absolute world to us. Putting out fun hypotheticals there yesterday about whether or not Jesse Edwards could potentially be a fun fit for Duke basketball from West Virginia, uh, formerly from Syracuse. You can find that episode wherever you get your Blue Devil podcast. So uh, let's get into it today. Very excited to have my good pal Josh Smith from the aforementioned Devil's Den podcast joining us here on the show. And Josh, certainly do appreciate the time. I hope you're doing well, my friend. Yeah, man, doing well. I appreciate you having me on. It's a great time of year. It's NBA draft season. And for whatever reason, I'm going to say it's because this season there are only two Blue Devils being drafted compared to five a year ago. The draft snuck up on me, man. I was talking about it a good bit, and all of a sudden I look at the calendar this week, and it's like, oh, yeah, that's this Thursday. That's tomorrow. We'll get to watch the NBA draft unfold. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's a little different for us. We're not losing a whole lot. I mean, I think the two guys we have in were expected to kind of be there for pretty much from the get go. So a little different. I think that most interesting part for us now is kind of seeing where they go, you know, like where do they fit? um, What kind of team dynamic do they get into? So we'll see, man. Derek Lively shooting up the board. So. Yes, he is. No doubt about that. So I want to get into that. I want to talk about some of these players. Obviously, we're talking about Derek Lively, the second, and Dariq Whitehead in the format of today's show uh, is is no different than our Locked On Blue Devil fans love. Fill in the blank. I'm going to provide the statement. You provide the answer. And I think it's fitting we talk with the two guys that are set to get drafted this week. So this one's pretty easy, Josh, because you only have two choices to (laughs) choose from here. But I ask you this, blank in the draft class has the highest ceiling. You're choosing between Whitehead and Lively the second. So I ask you, blank in this draft class has the highest ceiling. Yeah, you know, I just said, you know, Lively's kind of creeping up there. I still think Derek has the highest ceiling if he hits it. You know, I think he has a, it's a larger gap for him to get there. But just guards and wings typically just have a little bit more, you know, opportunity to kind of be like an alpha score, to have the ball in their hands. Um, and we didn't see really what Derek can do at Duke due to some of those injuries. I mean, in high school, this guy was lethal on ball, off ball. Um, obviously, the three-point shot is there. I think he still has a lot to show us. And I think if he can get in a good fit, I'd love to see him in a Charlotte, in an OKC or Miami, somewhere like that. Um, I think his ceiling is the is the highest. I would say that Derek Lively is more likely to reach his, though, if that makes sense. No, that's a great way to look at the question, Josh. And that was not a direction that I necessarily thought about going, but you've swayed me. I think you're right. I think going into this, obviously, we're seeing Lively skyrocket up these draft boards, really excited to see where ultimately he ends up getting selected tomorrow night. But it's interesting when you hear people talk about Whitehead's game. We do that a lot. As the high school player that he was, he wasn't really known for that outside shot, more so a player that attacks finishes at the rim he battled some injuries in his lone season at Duke and now all of a sudden he's known as a knockdown shooter 
43% from the outside is pretty impressive. I do think that's going to translate at the next level. So you combined the ball handling, the attack, the rim, everything that we knew in the high school version of Dariq Whitehead combined with the shooting. Yeah, that ceiling has got to be incredibly high. So I do think Whitehead ultimately walks away being the right answer for this one. Yeah, you know, I think for Derek, if the question was who impacts winning the most right away, I would have said Lively because I yeah. think he can just come in and be that kind of force at the rim right away. Um, but I think, you know, three, four, five years down the road, we might look up here and see Derek maybe getting some All-NBA mention, maybe getting some All-Star mentions. Um, I don't think that's out of the question for him. All right, let's move on here. We've got another fun one here, and we're not going to talk about this year's team. Uh, this one is – not as fun for Duke fans to talk about, but it's a basketball conversation nonetheless. So I ask you this, blank is the biggest Duke first round NBA draft pick disappointment. So I hate mm. to do this, but blank is the biggest Duke first round NBA draft pick disappointment. That's a tough one. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to remove injuries from it and just go from like kind of what we've seen. And, and it's probably think, a fair way to look at it. Yeah. I think Jaleel gets kind of the easy pigeonhole answer there. I would go back a little bit. Um, Sheldon Williams is a guy that I really thought could maybe have more of an impact than he did. But for me, JJ is Marvin Bagley. I mean, this was a guy who had all the tools you thought. I mean, pogo stick legs, um, showed the ability to kind of take the ball off the rim, go coast to coast, could shoot the three, averaged kind of what, like 22 and 11 or something crazy at Duke and just hasn't found it. And really, it's just because he can't put the defensive part together. And that's that's sad to see because he's a perfect modern big guy out there. I'm looking at what Jaron Jackson Jr. is doing in Memphis, and I'm just kind of thinking – where you at bags, you know, like where's that unicorn like potential? I hear the Wimbenyana stuff. Bagley wasn't quite there, but I don't think he was that far from being that in high school, the way people talked about him. Um, still some time, you know, it's only his fifth, sixth year in the league. So there is some time. But uh, for me, I think it would be Marvin Bagley. I thought he would be able to have much more of an impact um, than he's had so far. So. Yeah. Hate to do it to you, bags, but look, we've got a lot of choices to choose from. Here, I know, right? unfortunately. And, yeah. And, and so that's a good problem to have. It's just hard to think about all the names that get lost in the shuffle because credit to you. I hadn't thought about Sheldon Williams in quite some time. I know, man. But what a player he was, yep. Josh, and all the accolades he has, what you're expecting him to be. I think you can make the case for him to be the choice. Okafor yep. is going to get a lot of thought recently here's another one that i'd love for people to ponder and talk about in the comments if you're watching us on youtube or send us your thoughts on twitter at lo underscore blue devils what about christian leitner yeah i thought what about, about one. one of the greatest college basketball players of all time and yes he was a one-time all-star in yeah. the nba which is nothing to shy away from however when you are one of the greatest college basketball players of all time the, the nba career a little disappointing with what you yeah. thought it could have been a guy that ultimately gets to be on the dream team yeah. other than some guy by the name of shaquille o'neal i mean the sky was the limit back in 92 entering the league uh in that 93 draft for christian leitner so i mean man that that was a name that i thought of uh, for this. If I had to yeah. pick an answer, I, I think I was leaning more in the uh, Okafor direction just due to how it's been recency bias and whatnot. But I, I ponder Christian Leitner as I turn it back over to you. Yeah, just because given the competitiveness of him too, right? And I think he had some stuff off the court that kind of happened and he kind of started dabbling in stuff. And obviously, you know, some of the places he played in weren't the best places to play in at that time. But um, yeah, I think that whole kind of just era right there, that's kind of when Duke got that mantra, right? Of like, well, these guys are good in, in college, but they don't do anything in the pros. Um, and I think that was kind of spearheaded by Leitner, unfortunately. NBA draft first round disappointments. A couple of guys that we've been discussing here on the program as we fill in the blanks between Jaleel Okafor, Marvin Bagley the third. I mentioned Christian Leitner. Sheldon Williams was a great one. Let's go back late 90s, right? Elton Brand starts to take off by leaving early. I'm not going to go in Elton Brand's direction. I don't want to put him in that category. But someone who follows quickly after, Corey Maggette, a first-round mm. pick. A lot of people really thought he could be a premier player at the next level. Turned in a 
pretty solid career, but I think you might walk away a little disappointed. So tons of options, Josh, is the way we're looking at this one. And we had to choose just one to fill in the blanks. That was a good one. Yeah, it's hard, right? I guess that's the moral of the story. It's hard. Um, you know, maybe credit to Duke, credit to those guys, credit to Kay for putting them in the position to get there. Um, but it, we see it every year, you know, guys get, and some of the, the pros that we see now, you know, Kawhi, Clay, all these, they, John Morant, they come from different backgrounds, different schools, universities, and it's hard to predict where that's going to happen, you know? Good. And I'm glad you mentioned injuries outside of this alone as well, because again, let's talk disappointments. What Bobby Hurley and Jay yeah. Williams could have been as first round selections. We're going to keep injuries out of that. Jabari Parker, another one I thought Jabari of, you Parker know, had, had tons of injuries in his NBA career. Great. That's another recent one there. All right, let's take our first time out here on the program and locked on blue devils. will continue here in a moment. Locked on Blue Devils today is brought to you by our friends over at Bird Dogs. Absolutely love our friends at Bird Dogs. I think this has turned into my favorite product to wear. Why? Well, because Bird Dogs make you look good. The stretch khaki shorts are designed to fit slimmer through the thigh and leg, giving you a truly sculpted look. I'm wearing Bird Dogs right now. The shorts do the exact same thing as Lululemon, but fit way, way better. They fit way better than regular shorts that are made of stiff, restricting cotton. They fix the issue by inventing the cloud knit fabric that looks just like khaki, but stretches so you get a way slimmer fit without having to sacrifice movement. The anti-stink sweat wicking fabric that keeps you cool and dry all day long is why I love Bird Dogs so much. Go to birddogs.com slash locked on college for a free Yeti style tumbler with your order. That's birddogs.com slash locked on college for a free Yeti style tumbler. You don't want to take your bird dogs off. We promise you that. We'll move forward here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. JJ Jackson alongside my pal Josh Smith from the Devil's Den podcast. We're filling in the blanks in the NBA draft edition of this one for Duke Hoops. So let's keep it going. Let's talk about uh, this upcoming season. The 2023-2024 team for Duke. Blank on the upcoming team will be the best Duke draft prospect. Not player, but draft prospect. Yeah, prospect is a, is hard. Um, I, I think it might actually be the same person for both of those for me. And I'm going Tyrese Proctor. Um, just the size, just the ability. Of, we've seen what he can do in the pick and roll. We've seen the defensive potential that he has on ball. Um, if the shot towards the end, and we've talked about this before, if that shot towards the end of the season, those last kind of month and a half, if that's who he is as a shooter too, um, I think he's the best prospect. The size is there, six five. The ability to play on or off the ball at the combo level. Um, I see a lot of that kind of, you know, SGA Luca. Not not that where he's going to be, but that's the type of game that he kind of plays. Halliburton, that sort of like kind of just everybody wants that type of guard. Um, and so it's going to be Proctor for me, man. I'm expecting a huge year from him. So hopefully, I'm not jinxing that. Yeah. If uh, again, blank on the upcoming 2020. 2024 team will be the best Duke draft prospect. And I think Tyrese Proctor has got to be the answer for everybody. I talked often uh, when he makes the decision to come back for his sophomore season, it's ESPN's Adrian Wojnarowski who breaks that story talking about a projected lottery pick. And we're still over 12 months away at this point when that news was made from the 2024 NBA draft when Proctor would then be eligible. So, yeah, really excited for the player that he could be at the next level, the size of his frame, the shooting ability that will improve, I believe, going into the season, and then just pure vision that he's got as a playmaker. I think Proctor has got to be the way to go with that one. Do you think we've got other NBA draft prospects on next year's squad? It's just, hey, there's only one choice that we're going with here. So yeah. it's Caleb Foster would be another guy to look for though. If you would, if you wanted, I almost looked at Caleb Foster. I'm super high on him. He's got like the same that. frame, same size, three level scoring. Um, so yeah, but it's gotta be Proctor for me. All right, let's go on to our next one. If you are drafting the Duke players in the NBA currently blank would go number one. We didn't specify what type of NBA draft this was. It's just an NBA draft with Duke guys. So if we're drafting the Duke players currently blank would go number one. Yeah, we actually just recorded a pod on this, too, and it's going to drop sometime this week. So I'll stick with what we said over there. I'm going Jason Tatum for me. If I'm putting like a guy out there, answer, I mean, yeah. you know, he, he's already played in the finals. He looks like a future MVP. He looks like he could be the best player on a title team. 
Um, I think when it's all said and done, we could look back and say, hey, is, is this guy the best pro to ever come out of Duke? Tatum has already had an all NBA first team season, right? And only five players in the league get that designation. And Tatum's already done that. As you mentioned, he's already been to the finals. I, I think Jason Tatum right here is the easy answer. Uh, I think if we asked this question a few seasons ago, Kyrie Irving is really, really giving him a yep. – Kyrie Irving would have been the answer. I don't think yep. that there was much overlap between those two guys being at the top uh, of their games and whatnot. And then a lot remains to be seen. I mean, we're recording this on NBA Draft Week. Who knows um, if, if Zion Williamson's days in New Orleans are numbered. But, mm -hmm. you know, if he can stay healthy, he's a player in the NBA that I think you would still really consider – drafting number one for your team uh but uh, yeah I, I just i think tatum ultimately just does a little bit too much it's still young in his career too yeah Josh. yeah still it's still young Paolo's another guy if we are factoring in age in a draft and we're looking oh, at Paolo, it, yeah Paolo's That's a guy that i love i mean he can get kind of buried a little bit in orlando um rookie of the year i, I love the guy too so i mean i think he could be another future all-star with we're looking at but injuries, again, you just don't know what to, be to, to make of, of Zion's career, so to speak, and, and hopefully he's able to stay healthy in the years to come because what he's able to do on the floor is still so dominant. Oh, no. oh my goodness. I'm hopeful that guy can Hoping he doesn't become that disappointment answer for well, you. Yeah, really hoping need, that happens. We don't that. need that at all because, yeah, you talk about the one single season he had of college hoops. I'm not looking for that to be an answer uh, if we were to record this show a few years from now. So – um, yeah, love that. Love that. All right, we're filling in the blanks here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils, and we'll continue after one more timeout here on the show. Don't miss Locked On NBA Draft Live on Thursday night. Pick by pick analysis from our stable of local NBA hosts, national reaction from our NBA big bore hosts, and live check ins from inside the NBA draft. It's Locked On NBA Draft Live starting at 7 30 p.m. Eastern on the Locked On NBA YouTube page. Be sure to check it out. After today's show comes to a close, make sure you go check out Locked On College Basketball. My good buddies Isaac Shade and Andy Patton do a remarkable job telling you everything that you need to know across the world of college hoops. Go check it out. Locked On College Basketball. It's available wherever you get your podcasts and on YouTube. Find a few moments here on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. J.J. Jackson alongside my pal Josh Smith from the Devil's Den podcast. Let's talk about you, my friend. You mentioned an episode coming out soon. If people aren't aware of the Devil's Den podcast, what's your elevator pitch? Why should people go check out the show? Yeah, man. Well, in the summer, we're trying to just cram it full of guests as much as we can. Um, we do Perfect. some fun stuff there, but, you know, we've had Travis Branham on for 247 talking about the 2023 class. Uh, we had Dan Favalli from Hardwood Knox come on and talk about some of our NBA guys. Hoping to get a, a draft guy to come in afterwards to talk about team fit a little bit. Um, you know, so that, that's kind of where we're at in the offseason is just trying to kind of pull some guests in. We had Dave Bradley last year. Um, so that that's kind of our network. We like to cover basically just basketball. We, we kind of leave the football stuff to the Section 17 <laughs> guys and you all. Um, we don't dabble too much over there. Strictly basketball. Um, really excited for Peach Gam. We got Steve Clark going to that. So when he comes back, we'll have full coverage. So um, if you're into recruiting and kind of gear gearing up for that, it's the perfect time to kind of get involved. At Devil's Den Pot 247 on Twitter to get notified when new episodes are posted. All right. So, uh, Josh, we've got a few more to go here. We're filling in the blanks with NBA draft topics. And uh, yeah, let's get to these final two. So, this is a, a fun one to talk about here. Since 2010, blank is the Duke player that I wish got a better opportunity in the NBA. Mm. Fun question to think about, and I did want to kind of put it in some time frame. So since 2010, blank is the Duke player that I wish got a better opportunity in the NBA. That's a good question. Um, a lot of different guys. Again, it's hard to kind of tease out the injury stuff, right? Because that's kind of in there a little bit. Um, for me, it kind of comes down to, to two guys, really. And I know we just talked about him, but Jaleel Okafor gets okay. drafted to Philadelphia and they were going through the trust the process stuff. So you got Embiid there. You got Nerlens Noel coming in. It was very quickly that they just moved on from him versus 
look what Carl Anthony Towns found in Minnesota. They clearly prioritized him. They built around him. He's not a good defender by any means either. Um, so I wonder what might have happened had Ja found somewhere else that was really committed to saying, hey, let's get the pick and roll defense up to speed. Hey, let's develop this corner three point shot. Um, the other guy from the same exact team, he's had some injuries. I was a huge Winslow guy, still a big Justice Winslow fan. Um, he's kind of bounced around the league a little bit there, but. I just kept waiting for it to pop and it just, it just didn't. Uh, and maybe, you know, it, it's hard to say because in Miami, they let him run point guard there for a while. So it's hard to kind of say that they didn't give him the shot. But uh, I think the 2015 team, unfortunately has a few guys that you could probably pick from. Yeah. So here's my answer to that question. It's also from that 2015 team and it's a player who didn't ever get to play in an NBA game. But again, we're since 2010, Blank is the Duke player that I wish got a better opportunity in the NBA. And I wanted to give some love to Matt Jones, Josh. Mm, My mm. pal, Matt Jones, the ultimate team player, a knockdown shooter for Duke throughout his college career, had a cup of coffee with the Sacramento Kings organization in the G League, right? Is able to go make tons of money playing hoops overseas and continued his professional career uh, playing basketball. But I just wish he would have gotten a better run in the NBA. And obviously you got to earn it and that sort of thing. But this is my answer to this one. <laughs> Love Matt Jones, a player that is often forgotten about on that 2015 yeah. title team. But yeah, I was thinking about Matty J with that one. Yeah. Yeah. 2015 has, has a few there, right? I mean, you could probably pick from, um, but when it, when it counted, they got it done for us. So we'll even Marshall it. Plumley, man. I mean, think about the, other, his older brothers played a little bit longer in the NBA than Marshall did. I know he's doing, uh, some of that uh, army work out there yeah. uh, with with his life, but uh, yeah, would have loved to see what a kind of opportunity he got could have gotten in the league. All right, so uh, this next one is kind of similar to what we've been talking about, but blank would have flourished if they had been drafted to a different team. So fit is what we're talking about a lot. We'll be you know discussing that for lively and Whitehead when they're drafted tomorrow. But when you look at Duke basketball in the NBA draft, blank would have flourished if they'd been drafted to a different team. Flourished, I guess we can kind of take that a few different ways here. For me, I'm looking at Nolan Smith. Um, Nolan Smith was a, a, a guard. Now, the size, there were some limitations. Defensively, you knew what he was going to do. The scoring had really took off. He gets to Portland, right? And like right on the coattails, here comes Dane. And that it's hard to compete with that, right? You can't play really both of them together. Um, and so that he's a guy that I thought could maybe kind of stick a little bit longer. Um, and who knows, you know, you go to a different spot and it can change everything. Ryan Kelly and James Michael back to the, on their podcast, they've talked about that dynamic of you get in a certain team in a certain organization and they just kind of stash you, right. Or they're just not really invested in that. Whereas somewhere else, lower market or something, they might really be looking to kind of, you know, use those assets differently. Um, so I'll, I'll go, I'll go the people's champ. The people's champ could have been a choice for a, a question we had earlier because a first round draft pick to yep. Portland. I mean, he classifies as a first round guy who yep. uh, Nolan Smith didn't necessarily get the big run that we would have loved. I, I thought a lot about Marvin Bagley the third, who was someone that you discussed a little bit earlier, Josh. But talking about him being drafted to the Sacramento Kings, right? A, a time where Sacramento did not have Mike Brown uh, running a well-oiled machine offensively. They didn't have some bu- The fit just was awful uh, for Bagley. He played really well once he got into Detroit, and I think he's starting to, to make a much of a more of a bigger impact. But considering what he did in that lone season at Duke, Bagley the third was the player that I was thinking about. You know what? If he's drafted to a different team maybe it works out a little bit better for him. Yeah, yeah, and it's hard to tell, right? It's really hard to tell what happens if you kind of switch things around a little bit and he goes to Phoenix, you know, and not Aiton, and, or he ends up in Atlanta with Trey Young or Dallas right. with Luka, and those dynamics really kind of allow him to go. Um, Absolutely. It, it's, it, it's, it's tough, man. It's tough. Absolutely. Well, this has been a whole lot of fun. It's been Duke NBA draft fill in the blank. Josh, you've been excellent as always. Really appreciate when you take the time to join me. So uh, thanks for stopping by again. We'll have to do this sometime soon. Okay. Yeah, man. Appreciate you, JJ. All right. That's Josh Smith joining us here on today's episode of lockdown blue devils. And that's going to do it for our show here today. 
The draft comes up tomorrow night. Let's find out where, in fact, Dariq Whitehead and Derek Lively II will be drafted to begin their NBA careers. That'll do it for today's show. I'll talk to you soon. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you and good day.